All right, so we are on 18.3 rates of change in linear and quadratic functions, okay? Again, you did this in algebra two, but um, I know we've slept since then. So first we're gonna do a little bit of review. We're gonna talk about linear functions. Remember this guy? Yes. For any linear function, the average rate of change over any length input minus value interval constant. That's like the most formal thing. That's all it is saying. Um, it's the input, so you're changing your y over you're changing your x. That's all this is basically saying. It's your... You don't want me to write? That's cool. I didn't want to write anyway. You're changing your y over, over you're changing your x. And we often think this is the what? The slope of the line. Remember that? No one's like, oh, I've never heard that before. Then you're a liar. All right. So quick, continue with our review. The, the table above gives selected values of the function f of x. Explain why f of x is not linear, okay? So to prove that this isn't linear, we're going to discuss how it changes over the intervals. In order to do that, you're going to find the slope from one point to the next, right? When you're calculating that, remember you're, you're saying, how did I get from here to here? How did I get from here to here? How did I get from here to here? Right? That's your change. So these represent the change in your y, and these represent the change in your x. Correct? Yes. No. No, that's not why. So we're explaining why, and that's because um, the key thing is with linear, there's a constant rate of change, right? Linear functions have a constant rate of change. If it's not the same for everyone, then it's not a linear function. So um, the difference from here to here is one, two, and four. The difference from here to here is three, three, and three. Okay. So when I'm now analyzing the rate of change, so I'm going to find the slope. So from one to two, my change in y over change in x equals what? Say it again, say it again, say it again. Thank you. Three over one, which makes it three. Yes? All right, now we're gonna do the next one, which is gonna be two to four. So two to four, the change in Y over the change in X equals, what's my change in Y for two to four? Three over two. And then we're gonna do it four, four to eight. And again, we're looking at our change in y over our change in x. And what's the change in y? And what's the change in change in y? Change in x? Where are we stuck at, guys? No, it's seven or eight. The left We have questions that I went past deliberately because I thought we were all on the same page. Okay, you're changing your y's are saying, how did you get from one y to the next? You're changing your x, they're saying, how did you get from one x to the next? So when I ask you from one to two, so I'm looking at this interval, how did my y's change? Three over one. So it's changing rate is three. Next interval, two to four. How did my y's change? Three. How did my x change? Two. So my change of rate is three over two. Four to eight. Four to eight. How did I change on the y? How did I change on the x? Where are we? Are we okay? Not a good sign. We're not right now. It's a little nerve wracking. Okay. So in order for this to be linear, these values need to be the same. Are these values the same? No. So since these values aren't the same, this is not a linear function. Does that make sense? So our reason is this is nonlinear because there isn't a constant rate of change. Make sense? So nonlinear because there 
isn't a constant rate of change. Yes? Yep. No one's like, that makes no sense. Okay, so this is for linear. We're about to switch to quadratic and verifying graph um, with a table, I'm sorry, if something is quadratic. So I need to know if we're okay with linear. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about quadratics. So consider the quadratic function g of x equals x squared. That's our parent function, right? Complete the table of values for the g of x over the consecutive equal length input value intervals below. Then complete the table for the average rates of change, okay, for each consecutive interval. So up first, we have, again, we're using g of x equals x squared, and our first x value that we're evaluating is negative 3. So when we say evaluating, that means we're, we are using the function x squared. If I was to substitute negative 3 in, what do I get? Positive 9. If I was to substitute negative 1 in, positive 1, positive 3, and positive 5. 25. Yes? Are we okay? Really? I know. Okay. Sorry, can't solve that problem. But here we go. We can do this one. Here, next, average rate of change. So I'm going to pause, give you a moment, and you're going to find the average rate of change over the given intervals. So from negative three to the negative one, negative one to one, one to three, three to five. In order to find that, we're finding the change in the y over the change in the X, ready, set, go. Okay, so as you can see, I saw that some of us were like trying to figure out where to start, gave us a little hint. Remember when you're finding your change in Y and your change of X, you're subtracting your second, y, well, your first Y from your second Y. One minus nine is negative eight. So keeping that in mind, that should have been negative eight. Um, everything else was fine I, as I walked around, saw or listened. Then you had to find your change of um, average rate of change. So your average rate of change from negative three to negative one. So from negative three to negative one, looking at my change in my y, which is negative eight. So we have negative eight over two, which makes my average rate of change what? Negative four, yes? Looking from negative one to one, my change in y was, and my change in x was, which makes my average rate of change, zero. Yes? Okay. From one to three, we had over, which made our change in rate. And then three to five, we had, which made our change in rate, eight. Yes? Okay. Now, what makes a quadratic, how you can tell if a table is a quadratic, is if there's a pattern between your average rate of change. Okay. What you're looking for is a pattern between your average rate of change. Is there a pattern between my average rate of change here? What is the pattern? It increases by four. So plus four, plus four, plus four. Okay. This works when it's over a consecutive equal length, meaning that to get from my X's, my change in my X is the same for all of the intervals. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when it says consecutive equal length input values, it's just saying your change of your X is the same. This can only work if the change in your X is the same. Got it? So how do I know that this is, uh, what did you notice about the average rate of change? They are increasing at a constant rate of four, right? Okay, so for quadratics, they have a constant average rate of change versus linear have a constant rate of change. Make sense? Okay, quadratics have a constant, like a pattern, average rate of change, right? 
So there is a pattern for my average rate of change, not my initial rate of change. Make sense? Yeah. Whereas linear, they all need to be the same. If I'm three, we all need to be three. Right. A little bit. It's the foundation. Well, I'll choose the foundation for this. All right. Yes. Okay. Let's try to tie it together. So we have various functions are given on the tables. For each table, we're going to determine if it's linear, quadratic, or neither. Okay. So um, we did learn in algebra two ways to determine whether it's linear, quadratic, right? Um, or neither by analyzing our differences in our y's. You remember doing that? First difference is linear. Second difference is quadratic. That works as well, right? The only problem is it has to be the same change in my x's. So I have to be increasing the same amount from one to the next, okay? So that's a key thing when we're analyzing that, all right? The other thing is using your average rate of change. You can do that as well. However, um, I'm going to model both. I'm going to do the difference one really quick just to review algebra two. But the focus for our class is average rate of change. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So in algebra two, we said, okay, if the first difference, so I'm going to do the first difference, right? My first difference here is I add one. We added three. We added five. First difference is not the same, so it's not a linear. I'm going to check the second difference. Here we added two, we added two. Our second difference is the same, so we know it's quadratic, right? Agree? Okay, so that's the algebra two part review. So for a fact, we know that this is a quadratic model because of, yes. Yes, so remember, it's quadratic, exactly. Yeah, well, there's others. It's just These are the only two options we're looking at right now, right? This only works when it's a consecutive order. One, two, three, four. However, I cannot use the same thing here. Does that make sense? It still needs to, it works with the one, like when you're separated by one, like one unit of difference. So I can do like two, three, four, five. One, no, it only works when it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like in whole number order or integer. Yeah, no, whole number order. Our whole numbers, one, two, three, four, five. It could, yeah, it could be two, three, four, five. It could be five, six, seven, eight. It could be from there. It better not be. I say should. Thank you. Good help. Sorry, yes, you. All right. Did it meet me? So to take attendance. I did. Uh, well, it says she says she did. It says my attendance is taken. Okay, great. All right, bye. You're fine. See? They're they're calling the wrong person. Maybe they're calling the wrong person. Asasia, does what does it say on the screen? It's done. I knew it. They were coming for me. All right. So this one we're gonna use our average rate of change to analyze. Okay. Average rate of change is saying. Is there a consistent change between the numbers, right? So when we look here, the reason why I have to use average rate of change is this is in whole number order. No, it's not. There's not in whole number order. So we're going to look at our average rate of change. So from one to two, what is my average rate? What's the change in my Y? What's the change in my X? So my average rate of change is one. Agree? Wait, why is it average? Because this is in, in consecutive whole number order. So I can't find it using the difference. Yes? Are you with me? All right. On the next one. What is the change in my rate from 2 to 5? So we have 3 over, which also equals 1. 3 over 3 equals 1. <laughs> you knew that. I know. Yes. Uh, what made you, what, what made you uh, decide to put three over three? Um, so here, you're, you're finding the average rate of change, and your average rate of change is the change in your y over the change in your x. Four minus one is three. Five minus two is So y2 minus y1. Okay, so we have five over five, which equals 
one. one. My average rate of change is the same. So it's what linear. is this? It's linear. Good job. I was also lost Ask the question. I can't read mine. Sorry. It's not my strong suit. All right. This one, again, can I just find the difference? No. No. Womp, womp, womp. One over one. So one minus negative one. Zero. One minus negative one. One. Zero. Two. two. It's two. Three minus one. So my average rate of change is? One. Okay. Two minus one. Five minus three. Two minus two. And seven minus five. So it just equals. Okay. They're not the same, but is there a constant value being added or subtracted? Is going to be subtracted. What is that constant value? Minus a half and then minus a half because there's a constant change of my rate of change. Let's make this a quadratic. I did not. Okay. How do we feel about analyzing the table to determine whether it's linear or quadratic? We're okay. All right. Oh, um, next, concavity. Yes, please. Go back now, then. All right. Okay. So, concavity. We talked, oh, oh, my knee just popped. Ooh. Um, but When something is concaved up, the average rate of change over equaling input value interval is going to be increasing for all small lengths. So it's going to be increasing if it's concaved up. Yeah. What else would be? <laughs> okay. If it's concave down, it's going to be decreasing. I probably am writing the wrong tense. I just realized that. I should be putting ing. Ing, okay, makes sense, right? So if I'm like this, on my interval, my slopes are gonna be increasing, right? If I'm like this, my slopes are gonna be decreasing. Make sense? You're looking at your slopes. What are your slopes doing? Not what the function itself is doing, but at each point, that tangent line, is it getting, what is the tangent line doing? And that's what it's describing when it says concavity. How are your tangent lines changing? They are. All right, so here we have um, selected value of functions, K, M, and P are, um, are given in the tables below. For each function, determine if the function could be concave up, concave down, or neither on the given interval, okay? So when we're looking at it, we're going to be analyzing whether our constant rate of change is increasing or decreasing. If it's increasing, then we know it's concave. And if it's decreasing, we know it's concave. Make sense? All right. So in order to do that, we have to find the rate of change first. All right. So we're going to find our average rate of change from here to here. What's my rate of change? It's going to be. What's one minus four? One minus four is three. Negative three. What is 1.1 1. 1 minus one? Point one. If you have a dollar 10 and you spend a dollar, you're left with 10 cents, right? Okay, and then we have point 0.3 divided by point 0.1, which equals negative 30. Yeah. Let's do it. I love when I have to get the usual fractions. All right, here we go. Negative three divided by 0. 0.1 equals negative three divided by one tenth. When you're dividing by a fraction, you're going to keep, change, and flip, which makes this into negative 30. 
I realized that I wrote the wrong color, but y'all didn't say anything, so I just kept going. <laughs> So do we understand why it's negative 30? Yep. Yep. Fractions and decimals. Okay. All right. Let's go again. Yeah. We're going to find another one. I hate when I use yellow because I can't find the dot on the white. Where is it? Okay. I see it making marks, but I don't know where it's at. Oh. I can't find it. It's right there. Okay. I see it. I see it. I was getting there. I just couldn't find the the space to change the color. This yellow is hard on the white. Okay, close enough. Close enough. Back to what we were doing. Will we all understand how I got 30? Yeah. All right, let's do it again. Negative one minus one. Negative two. There we go. And then we have 1.2 minus 1.1. 1. 1. 1. Minus 1. Negative 20. Good job. I literally went so fast. All right, negative two minus negative one. Good job. 1.3 minus 1.2, 0.1. Negative 10. Which is negative 10. All right, so what's happening? It's quadratic. It's quadratic, and what is it doing, though? It's concave up. Why is it concaved up? No. It's increasing. I'm adding 10 every time. Uh, oh, it's you're getting out of debt, right? Yeah. I had I owed you negative three. I paid you 10. Now I owe you negative 20. I paid you 10. Now I owe you negative 10. So we know that it is quadratic and it's concave what? Up. Because we're increasing. Make sense? Yes? Y'all are with me? All right. Is that... Wait, hold on. Okay, I get it. All right, let's let's try again. Ready? Let's see if we're at All right, four minus one. Three. One point one minus one. Point one thirty. That's thirty. Seven minus four. One point two minus one point one. That's thirty. Ten minus seven. That's three. And then we get another point one. That's linear. It's linear. So is it going to be concave or, or concave down? Neither. Neither. Perfect. I really told you to do Yay. We let, me, let me teach the other one. All right, really quick. You're on your own on the last one. Practice it up. You can go. You can tell us what you get when everyone's done trying on their own. All right, go, Randy. Now, right. The dot. All right. So what's seven minus one? All right, perfect. Six. You guys are correct. It's hard to write on here, isn't it? Okay. One minus point one minus point one, which equals sixteen. <laughs> but I'm being judgmental today. It's Friday. Good, good job, Brandy. That looks so beautiful. You do. Eleven minus seven, which is four. Five. Yeah, four. four, five, four. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I hope nobody's asking because they're not watching this video. <laughs> and then you get point one again on the bottom. Then you get. <laughs> Wait, where's my work at? Oh, it's on the other side. Then you get two. Oh, no. oh, wait, time out. All right, let me really focus. Randy, what you doing over there? Just hold it like a regular pin. Uh, Ms. Jones, why does it keep going when I say no? <laughs> Randy, good job. I'll take over from here. <laughs> Quadratic and concave down because it's decreasing. Good job. Did everyone? Did everyone? Yeah. Only point one second. Any reasonable? You? Are you any? Oh my goodness. It's hard to write with this. You have to practice. It is a, but you just hold it like a regular pen, like you're going to write. All right, we have six over 0.1, which equaled 60. We had four over 110, which equaled 40. And then we had three over 110, which equaled 
30. And what was taking place? It was a decrease by 20 each time. Quadratic. And it's concave. Good job. Why is it concave down? Because it's decreasing. Yes? How do we feel about being able to analyze the table, determine concavity from the table? Good? Awesome.